In today's video, we will learn why this exercise is called Bulgarian split squats and also other exercises that are named after other countries. So let's start with the most hated exercise on the planet and that is Bulgarian split squat. This exercise is named after a Bulgarian assistant coach that actually presented this exercise in the United States and that's why after him, they named it Bulgarian split squat. There are some really great benefits performing this exercise. It's primary for the glutes and the quads. It's also unilateral one leg, so it means that it can fix some imbalances if you have any and also it's really good because you perform one leg exercise but also you have some assistance from the bench but 90 percent of your weight is on the forward or front leg so actually there's two ways how i like to perform this exercise first one will be if you want to target your quad a little bit more and if you have the mobility to do that and the second one is to target the glutes a little bit more so for the quads if you want to target them you actually want a shorter step and also when you get down i want a vertical body so as i get down this exercise requires a little bit of ankle mobility. You can see that I have my knee in line with my toes. This is actually great to target the VMO, the teardrop right here. I'm pushing through the toes, chest up, I come back, boom. You really feel it in your quad. And if you wanna target the glutes a little bit more, from the start, you will do a longer step, much longer step, depends on your anthropometry of your legs. I will lean my body slightly, also hip go back. And from here, I start initiating the movement with the hips back, and then I lean forward, get as low as I can, push to the hip, come back up boom and that's how you feel your glute two ways for one exercise you can target either the quads or the glutes in either way both work but this is like small details that eventually will change some things and get you better results next up russian twists this exercise got its name by the soldiers from Russia because they were preparing for the Cold War and they were using this exercise a lot to work on their conditioning, that's what it says. But primarily, this exercise targets your obliques as you have your rotation, your twist. You can see that I'm twisting and working on my obliques, but also core stability because I have the legs in the air. And if it's too difficult, you can put your legs on the floor and from here, rotate and perform the exercise. Our next exercise is pretty famous. It's the Romanian deadlift. This exercise was actually named after a Romanian weightlifter, Niku Vlad, that wanted to have an exercise to strengthen his lower back and also his hamstring to improve his pulling power for the Olympic exercises. How does this exercise differ from the conventional deadlift? Well, the deadlift, first of all, you have to touch the floor with the plates and also you have a squatting hinging movement. So you start hinging with the hip and then you get a little bit of squatting motion right here so you can touch with the plates and then come back up. With the Romanian deadlift, first of all, you don't touch the floor with the plates and also you go with the hip hinge and you perform the whole movement throughout the hip hinge until you get horizontal body angle, slight bend at the knee joint and come back up. This is a great exercise to develop hamstring and glute strength and also working the stabilizers of the lower back muscles. Our next exercise is Copenhagen plank. This is a pretty difficult exercise. I know it's not named after a country, but it's the capital city of Denmark. And actually this exercise comes from a football soccer club from Denmark that performed this exercise to strengthen the adductors of their players. It's pretty good for the adductors and also the obliques because you're in a side plank position. In order to set up for this exercise, you need a bench approximately somewhere around 50 centimeters of height. You place the top leg on the bench, preferably the foot. But if you have some issues with the inner side of your knee, you can place the foot a little bit more back or eventually perform it like this where you put your whole lower leg on the bench set up here get up you want your hip in line with the knee joint and you hold this static position right here but this is a more beginner variation the Copenhagen side plank is with the foot pick it up you want your hip in line with the ankle arm up and you hold this position isometrically next exercise is Spanish squats so this exercise is called Spanish squat, but honestly, I was searching and browsing online, but I couldn't find any information on why it is called Spanish squats, whether some assistant, strength and conditioning coach, or some players started performing this exercise. We don't know, but it's a pretty good exercise. I love it, especially for someone dealing with some knee pain, knee issues, very good exercise. Now the Spanish squat is primarily when you do a squat, you wanna do the motion up and down, right? Now I use the isometric version a lot where you get to a point, I see a quarter squat right here. You keep a vertical body, that's the whole point of the bend because it will hold your body weight and you will have a vertical shin angle, also vertical body, which won't put any stress on your tendons, but will put all of the stress on your quads. I'm doing this position for like 15 seconds and it already burns. Great exercise, I use it a lot with my clients. If you're dealing with any sort of knee pain, give this exercise a try for five sets of 45 seconds. Thank me later. Oof. Moving on to Cuban press. 
The name of this exercise actually has no certain meaning, just an American coach that named it Cuban and wanted to motivate his clients with a Cuban press. A great exercise for your shoulders, especially for a good warm up. It has two motions. One is vertical upright row. From here, you have external rotation. And from here, you have press, which is most of the actions that the shoulder goes to. And it's really good for warming up before doing your shoulder sessions or also your Tuesdays. Now let's perform some French press. So this exercise got its moniker because it was practiced by the French Foreign Legion. They were using actually sandbags to perform this exercise and that's how it got its name. Great exercise for the triceps, overhead, you can use a dumbbell or an easy bar. It works more in the lateral head, also provides great stability because you are using overhead motion and the shoulder has to stabilize. You can perform this exercise also seated because when you stand up, you have to stabilize also to the spine and some people have issues with the lower back. If you sit down, it will be much easier for you. This is an exercise ball but it's also called Swiss ball. And that is because back in the 1965, Switzerland physical therapists used to use a lot of this exercise to work with their patients, especially with patients with cerebral palsy. So that's why it's termed Swiss ball. There are some amazing exercises using the Swiss ball, especially for the core, for stability. I will show you one of my favorite and it's dead bug. To set up for the dead bug, you wanna lay on your back. You can see that my legs are elevated, 90 degree angle. I will place the ball on my knees. Arms will be fully straight extended. I want to flex my spine a little bit, so I want to activate my abdominals even from the beginning. And now the main thing about this exercise is the pressure. So you want to put pressure from your arms and opposite force from your legs. So as I push, you can also hold this isometrically. It really burns, but performing the dead bug actually means going alternating sides. So right and left. Meanwhile, maintaining that push all the time. Oh, this burns so much. Amazing exercise for the core. Make sure you add it. Next on the menu, we have Turkish get-ups. The Turkish get-up was actually named after Turkish wrestlers that use this exercise for their conditioning program. A great exercise is for the shoulder, great for stability of the shoulder because you can see that I was staying extended all the time at the shoulder joint and you have to keep an eye on the kettlebell as you go to the motion. Also great core exercises, core movement because you have some rotation, twisting. Another great exercise that you can use in your warm-ups and then eventually progress with your workout. Next up, we will perform two swings, kettlebell swings. One is the usual traditional kettlebell swing. Some people also call it the Russian swing, and that's why we will mention it. The Russian swing, let's say it like that. You start by performing a triangle with your feet in the kettlebell. You want to swing the kettlebell right underneath your hip flexors, and from there, explode up, squeeze the glute. You want to loosen up your shoulders. You don't want to pull it with your shoulders. You're using your hips to perform the movement. It goes something like this. <sighs> explode to the hip joint, oh, you should feel it in your glutes. Now, this is the Russian swing, and the next exercise we'll perform is the kettlebell US swing. Personally, I don't like this exercise at all. I'm not using it. It's a pretty new exercise. It was designed, created by the CrossFit community, which involves performing that swing, but also extending the kettlebell up, which will eventually target more the anterior shoulder. Go something like this. You can start with the same motion, but you extend it up, you press it, you let it down and press it again. And last but not least, we have the Hindu push-up. I know this is also not a country, originated in ancient India, and it's a great move to target your shoulders, especially for mobility, for a warm-up. Yoga classes use it a lot, so let's go to the movement and show you how to perform the Hindu push-up. You wanna set up in a push-up position, but the feet are in the same width as the arms. From here, I will extend my hip up, get in that downward dog position. And from here, you wanna go into it like you're swimming, like you're going for a swim, boom, dive in, now only upper body extends up, hold for a second, and then again, we come back with the hips up and perform the same movement again. It's a pretty difficult exercise, especially if you keep your elbows tucked. It's really a challenge. Comment down below which country are you from. Maybe we can create an exercise for that country too. See you in the next video. Peace.